So in terms of, of, I guess, the background on this paper and as it relates to us, um, as a lab, we typically use cluster profiler um, either to do enrichment analysis or GSEA. And uh, what you'll find is that's, that's almost like an endpoint analysis, right? Like once you get the gene set outputs, that gets put on a slide. But um, I've been in meetings where the conversation is then like, what does that mean? Or which one of these um, gene sets is the most important? And it's very difficult uh, to give any kind of answer to that. Um, there's also a lot of redundancy and gene ontology um, where something will be like cell wall and then the next gene set will be cell wall proteins and so you don't actually know which gene set to use and so gene walk uh, through deep learning has sought out uh, to provide a method that based on your context of your data um, can prioritize gene sets and their annotations for, uh, for better analysis and, and to almost get to like a, a mechanistic interpretation. Um, so yeah, you guys pretty much know all of this when we're doing GWAS, a differential expression, we get hit genes that rank by p-values. Um, and then we can do gene set analysis, which gives us a p-value again. But that p-value um, doesn't actually relate to biological significance. It's just statistical significance. And usually that relates to like a technical or, or an experimental evaluation and not necessarily a biological result. And so we don't actually have a way of saying if we have a hundred significant genes or a hundred significant gene sets of ranking them. Um, so that's one of the things that, that was done here. Um, so as it says at the end of the top paragraph there, they're, they're developing a gene specific knowledge driven in our method mechanistic hypothesis that are experimentally testable and help accelerate the biological discovery process. Um, gene ontology annotations are commonly used to add information related to biological processes, molecular functions, cellular components, and gene lists. Um, so in, the, in this area, they're basically talking about the shortcomings, uh, kind of what I talked about before of gene ontology and how they plan to better go about it. Um, and they're doing so by using a, I believe it's either machine learning or neural networking program called DeepWalk. If, if you guys are familiar with that, you can correct me. Um, but they're using that to draw behavioral relations between the, the genes and the ontology, the genes and the annotation. And I'll show you more in the figures later. Um, but, oh, how do I, there we go. All right, so can't find a way to, where to put you guys. Um, so in figure, uh, figure one here, you have your gene list, and then this is it with some ontologies as they relate to one or two genes. And then that's, I guess maybe, are you guys all, familiar with network analysis or should I should I explain that a little bit? It doesn't hurt to explain a little bit. Okay. So if you gene sets are made by taking like RNA seq data and doing a correlation analysis. And so if five genes are always upregulated together, they're said to be a gene set. 
And that later can get annotated as an ontology with functions or um, relevance to disease or biological processes. And so here you would have an annotation and this annotation is falling under an ontology. And so you have a network here where the blue is genes. And this output here would be like our typical cluster profiler output. Um, but they took it further and this vectorized, um, here they flatten this, this network into like a vectorized matrix essentially and put that into, is there a way I can zoom? We got command plus, you can zoom. Okay. How do I control where? Oh, here we go. Um, so they've they've taken this matrix and put it through um, an annotation program called Indra, which is a text mining program that takes your genes and gene sets and mines um, the literature for relevant terms that might be relevant to your gene sets and then annotates them. And then C is the actual gene walk um, expression based, right? So here you would have a list of nodes where the N, so let's say, Shoot, I'll give an example. This would be this would be a good one right here, in and out. And then that turns into in and out. And what you're trying to do is use the hidden layer to determine some kind of relationship and some kind of predictive pattern between these nodes. Um, this is then taken and a P adjustment value is, is done for both uh, the global. So you have to adjust for how many genes you've tested for. And if that gene has multiple functions, you have to adjust at, at the gene level as well. Okay. So they tested this um, against a couple ways. Um, I don't know, I don't know how well this is tested, but it's almost tested in like two case studies. Um, because they, they wanted to test almost independently of a database that's highly annotated for mechanisms, but that database doesn't necessarily exist. And so what they did was went into two studies where people have highly, I guess, observed and annotated the process of these two, um, these two genes. So QKI knockout and to see if they could just reproduce that with, um, with gene walk. And if we look over here, um, so the whole point of QKI is it's very relevant to uh, to myelination, and if we look over here, C is the output for the relevant myelination genes, and we get as a top output structural constituent of myelin sheath and myelination are the ranked hits for for the output for that one. And PIP1 comes back as central nervous system myelination. So it's able to actually prioritize independently of, of what was it was told, um, the biological relevance of the gene sets. So here they list the, 
I guess, a list of of other programs. Pretty much we do, I guess, what would be similar to string is typically what we do in this lab, a, a hypergeometric test and GSEA. I haven't really messed around too much with any of the rest of these. I did Panther one time, but what they go on to show is that um, these other functions are not able to delineate or, or give specific annotation of, of this QKI. Oh, I'm trying to look for where they say that. They show that, that Panther fails to do so. Oh, this is where, maybe it's in here. Um, Are you trying so to, to test uh, to test the reproduction? No, I was trying to find. I had a note somewhere where they where they compared it, but I can't find it. So, but are uh, they compared uh, the myelin um, experiment by by randomizing it because it, it is a stochastic method? So the deep walk works almost like random forestry. So you want to see if you repeat this randomly are the results correlated? And uh, it came back that uh, there was no significant difference, uh, no matter when they ran this twice um, and, and using random forestry, or not random forestry, gene walk, um, they were able to reproduce their results every time in this uh, QKI experiment. Um, and then they found another case study with JQ1 and similar, similar thing, except here, I think this is what I was thinking of here. They were actually able with, uh, with the Indra to produce more unique, uh, go terms than, than the traditional programs. So the traditional programs were pr producing things like cell component or or I'm trying to zoom in here. Or, yeah. So, so something like this isn't really a useful go term, NCRNA metabolic process. Whereas the output here from gene walk for the same stuff is you get hemopoiesis or positive regulation of transcription by RNA polymerase too. Um, those are far more specific and, or even, even for a uh, BRCA1, you get double strand break repair. Uh, those are far more specific annotations that come from Indra and are able to be prioritized by their network. And so then you, you can hopefully get better interpretation out of your, your gene sets. Uh, you're trying to zoom out, you can use them. Um, I was like trying to change the screen. Yeah. I'm like, I wish you guys could see my screen. I'm having like, juggling you from side to side over here that would make a lot oh, the of zone thing. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um yeah so they can conclude here that gene walk performs better than the alternative methods on the tasks on ranking and binary classification um and they show here uh a list of genes where they were able to give a, a more relevant and specific pathway assignment um, based on using their method. And so 
I haven't gotten to use this yet. They've made it a tool available on GitHub. But I, uh, I think I've gone through most of this here. They did, they did a bunch of statistical work and, and things like that. Um, but more so, I think this would be really interesting to go to look at some of our differential expression with, um, especially I can think back to when I was on the stem cell projects and we got like 200 positive results for gene set enrichment um, to try to prioritize a, and better annotate some of these genes. So is, does anybody have any questions or comments?